Hey everybody, hope y'all are doing well. The only diagram that we're gonna do today is um, this cross section of the heart. So if you check out your packet, um, it should be the third page in the packet and it will be on the back of that third page. Um, I think it would be smart to do this in red and blue. And also you can grab a green or just pencil um, to fill in the valves. But if we keep this red and blue going, um, I think it'll help you see the deoxygenated aspects of the heart and the oxygenated aspects. So let's get started with this diagram. And um, I'm hopefully gonna be able to put my hands on a virtual heart dissection that y'all will be able to do. So be on the lookout for something on Google Classroom about that. Um, I did post a click and drag activity. Let me pull up my um, Google Classroom here. This um, click and drag worksheet I made today, and if you click on it, you're able to take the word bank and drag this word over here to aortic arch. Well, if aortic arch had come with me, there we go. Um, aortic arch and put it in its correct place and then you can send it back to me and I'll give you um, some feedback on what you're missing or what didn't, what you didn't get right. Um, and then I put some shapes over here where it says place a red circle on either vein carrying oxygenated blood. So once you get it labeled, you can circle the vein that carries oxygenated blood. It's one of the exceptions to the rule. So that worksheet is on there um, under the homework assignments on Google Classroom. So if you'll check that out, um, we got 14 people that have done it so far. And then there's some online review that you don't have to turn in um, for blood flow and circulation. That's just a, a quiz that I found online. And then there'll be another one that pops up tomorrow for um, heart anatomy review, which is what we're going over right now. So um, just stay tuned to the Google Classroom. And I'm, again, gonna try to find that virtual dissection for us. Okie dokie. So let's start with the structures of the heart. And what we've done now is take a flap off of the front of the heart. We've cut the heart in half remove that anterior portion and now we're looking inside the heart. Um, I always like to start right and so first thing we're going to do is look at the three blood vessels that are going to deliver deoxygenated blood into this right atrium. Okay so our right atrium is number three. The three vessels that are going to deliver deoxygenated blood into that right atrium are your superior vena cava, bringing blood from above your head into the right atrium. Number eight, our inferior vena cava, and this is the hole, okay, this is the opening uh, from that inferior vena cava, and that deoxygenated blood is gonna scoot up that inferior vena cava and into that right atrium. Same thing would be true coming down superiorly and into that right atrium. The last, uh, opening inside this right atrium is the coronary sinus. And that coronary sinus is gonna mix in deoxygenated blood with the blood from the superior and inferior vena cava. And that blood is coming from the heart muscle itself. Remember that heart muscle uses oxygen and then it's gonna deliver that deoxygenated blood um, into the right atrium. The vessel itself is called the coronary sinus the opening would just be where it you know, opens into the right atrium. All right, from that right atrium, we now can see the valve. We can see that atrioventricular valve, the AV valve on the right side of the heart. The AV valve on the right side of the heart is the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve has three cusps or three little cups that hold that blood, um, or that will, uh, uh, three little cups, I should say, that will anchor down into the ventric ventricular wall, or the wall of the ventricle. Those cusps are anchored by chordae tendinae. They are strings inside the heart. I can try to draw one. This is your cusp, 
Okay, there's your tricuspid valve because it has three little cusps or three little cups. The strings that anchor those cups are called chordae tendinae, and that translates to tender cords. If you've ever heard somebody say, you're pulling on my heartstrings. Okay, y'all, you tell me this sob story, you make me feel bad and like, I, you know, giving y'all too much work or whatever. And then they say, I'll say, you're pulling on my heartstrings. Okay, when you're pulling on that somebody's emotions and you're pulling on the heartstrings, that's where it comes from. It's because they look like strings. They look like tiny tendons inside the heart that are going to anchor this valve down into a muscle on the ventricle wall. And that muscle is called a papillary muscle. It is a mountain-like muscle projection of just heart muscle. Okay? It is still the same thing as the myocardium. It's wrapped in that um, endocardium. So it is smooth on the inner surface of that chamber, but that chordae tendine connects to the papillary muscle and the papillary muscle connects to the ventricular wall. From this right ventricle, we are going to leave the heart. We are going to send deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So that blood will go through the tricuspid valve, through the right ventricle, and now we reach another valve. We have now reached the first semilunar valve, and it is called the pulmonary or pulmonic valve. Okay, it can also be called pulmonic. Um, so we need to write that in, pulmonic. Um, that pulmonic valve is just another way to describe it a little bit more accurate with the um, adjective for pulmonic versus um, pulmonary. But that pulmonic valve is semilunar. It's the one that we drew that looked like a Mercedes sign. Okay? And that pulmonic valve is going to allow blood to flow into the pulmonary trunk. From the pulmonary trunk, Blood is gonna go on either side. Didn't that pulmonary trunk will split into a right and a left pulmonary artery. That pulmonary artery is carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Okay, remember, we're in the chest cavity. So a lung would sit right here and a lung would sit right here. We're just scooting that blood over there to the lung to pick up oxygen. Then we're gonna bring that oxygenated blood back. We're gonna bring that oxygenated blood back from right lung, left lung, through the right and left pulmonary arteries. Okay, and that blood is going to go into your left atrium. I don't know if I said pulmonary arteries or pulmonary veins. Let me say that again. Oxygenated blood is going to come into this left atrium by your pulmonary veins. Veins, veins, veins. Okay, because remember, up here's my little note to myself, that veins carry blood towards the heart. So these veins that we've dictated with this red arrow are going to bring oxygenated blood back from the lungs um, and into this left atrium. From the left atrium, we're gonna go through our next AV valve, our next atrioventricular valve, the valve between your atrium and your ventricle. On the left side, it is your bicuspid valve because it only has two cusps instead of one, I mean, instead of three for the tricuspid valve, but it's more commonly called your mitral valve. Okay, the mitral valve um, is just kind of universally used to name that valve instead of bicuspid, but bicuspid is also used because it has two cusps instead of three, uh, like the tricuspid on the right side. So we go through the bicuspid valve. It still has chordae tendine. It still has papillary muscles. That is the same. And then the um, from that mitral valve, the blood, oxygenated blood, is going to go into the left ventricle. So we're going to carry that oxygenated blood through the right, through the left atrium into the left ventricle, and then through our next semilunar valve. So when you're going into a ventricle and when you're leaving a ventricle, you have to pass through a door. You have to pass through valve between the atrium and the ventricle and you have to pass through a valve between the ventricle and the artery that's carrying blood away, whether that's the pulmonary trunk or whether that is the aorta. The 
semilunar valve on the left side is called the aortic valve. Okay, it is semilunar in structure, but the name of it is the aortic valve because it's going to carry oxygenated blood or allow oxygenated blood to go into this aorta. Remember, you've got your ascending aorta, aortic arch, and then descending aorta as it goes down the back of your heart and then down your belly. All of these branches off of the top will carry oxygenated blood up towards your head. Okay, now if we look at our arrows here, I've got blue arrows on the right and I've got red arrows on the left. Those arrows can't mix. Okay, we cannot mix oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood. Therefore, there has to be a way to fully separate the right ventricle from the left ventricle. And that separation is called the interventricular septum. Inter means between, ventricular is ventricle, septum separate. Okay, so the interventricular septum will fully seal off the right ventricle from the left ventricle, therefore you don't get any mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. All right, so that is the cross section of the heart. Really all we added was this opening from, from the coronary sinus, chordae tendinae, the valves, papillary muscles, and the valves were, you know, your semilunar being pulmonic or aortic and your AV being tricuspid or bicuspid slash mitral. Okay, so that's in the interventricular septum. So we really didn't add a whole lot. We only added what you could see um, if you cut that front flap off of the heart. I forgot one. There it is, pulmonary trunk. Okay, remember that pulmonary trunk is this common area of the pulmonary arteries before they split, okay, before they split off to the right lung and the left lung. And aorta. I talked about it, but I didn't uncover it. Alrighty, so um, again, there will be a review on um, Google Classroom that will pop up that's a Swerkle quiz, and then I'm going to try to scan um, a, my normal review sheet that I'll do for this section, and y'all can fill it out, and I'll put the key up there. It's not in your packet, so you're going to have to kind of fill it out on notebook paper. If you have a printer at home, you can print it, and then I will uh, be in touch about our virtual dissection. If you haven't gotten your, I assume everybody's gotten their notes if they're taking it, so never mind. That was silly of me to say. Okay, hope everybody's doing all right. We're almost through another week. Can't believe it's already Thursday. Tomorrow's Good Friday, so um, hope everybody's getting ready for Easter weekend, and if you have any questions or concerns or need any help, just give me a shout. Talk to you later.